period, the place was no longer a palace. After taking over Motesa II, the place was turned into a military base. And in addition, while attacking the king, this house you see, the house was partially destroyed. So, uh, as you see it, it was just renovated when the king was to, uh, to host the royal wedding here. So they had to renovate the building. But during the period of had to organize the war to come back and attack Idi Amin. And he came back and Idi Amin was a president for nine years. Then after Obote came back and overtaken him, so he was called Obote II. And the same person. Mm, by the same, same person coming same back. Person coming back, with, back to Ronald Mwenda Mutevi the second, and Ronald Mwenda Mutevi brought back the kingship. That was after 26 years. And the king was crowned uh, in 1993 at Bordeaux, Nagalari. So up to date, we still have that king, and that is the reigning king, Ronald Mwenda Mutevi the second. And he's the son of uh, Mutesa the second. Now when the king of Buganda disappears, the king of Buganda gets the title Sekabaka. The Kabaka is the reigning king, but when he disappears, he gets the title Sekabaka. So when you hear me mentioning Sekabaka and Kabaka, don't be confused. I want us to move on the same place. Yeah. So here, when, uh, when they attacked the palace from 1966, there was a bloodshed here. So today the king sleeps in a banda, and that's a, a long chireka. But today the king will just come here for different functions, ceremonies, post his special visitors, just in this place. Mm -hmm. But when he comes, he doesn't sleep in here. In the evening, he feeds. But the same place, this is the, the very place they use for the Kabaka's birthdays, the end of year ceremonies. So we have the expos, just the expo ground is just there. Then we have the Nkuka behind there. So when the king is also to host the, the visitors, he will officially come here. So we are not allowed to enter in this house. Reason being, today the king has his office in this building. It's to be constructed by the Ubicho. And these buildings, were constructed in 1922, cement, and even using the iron bars. So for us, the Baganda here, we are constructing parts, I told you. So these were uh, these three buildings. They are the buildings to be constructed after the Udichwa visit to England. So the buildings, each, uh, each building you see, the, two, the three buildings, everything you see on this building, they are right from 1922. Even the iron sheets, even the, the bricks, they are from 1922. Even the windows are dirty. So each and every when the, the, the painting gets all dirty, they have to renovate it. But these ones, these are the buildings which were first constructed by the Udicho here in Uganda. And by that time of the Udicho, they were used as the offices. So these were different offices. Yeah. So these are the buildings. This one, the other one, and this one. No, they were not. <laughs> they were not. <laughs> now we are taking this road. <laughs> they were not. So Mwanga wanted to connect that lake. So the place right there, the place is called Ndeba. So he wanted to connect his lake from Ndeba up to Lake Victoria. But he never reached Lake Victoria because he disappeared before finishing his task. Now he wanted to use that lake as, an, as a, an escape way, well, provided they attack him in the palace here, he wanted to use it uh, to escape and, as an escape route. Yeah, and as an escape route. But he never reached where he wanted. Now, we haven't got anyone to finish uh, Kabaka's task, but that's a very big man made lake uh, in all East Africa and Africa as well. In the world. Do you guys have a man -made so that is a man-made lake. And they were using hands. Yeah, they were Just using hands. Tools, not yeah. machines. Yeah. You know, so pan, the lake, you know, pan, 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 the hoes, mm. and they could carry the mud uh, on their backs. 
to the, 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 the parts around it, so the door. Mm. So right here, we have the tree. And this tree, you see, the tree is called the African big tree. Mm -hmm. So its scientific name is Ficus natalensis. So the tree, uh, the local name is Mutuba tree. So the, the tree you see, the tree is very special and important in our kingdom. Because the Bagandas peel off the second layer of it, then that layer is pounded using the wooden mallets. It will then expand four times more than its original size. Then after, it's uh, exposed to the sunshine to dry up. And after drying up, it will get a brown color. So the fabric is called the back crop. Have you ever seen a back? Not really. So the back cross was used by our ancestors as uh, clothes before the introduction of this cotton and silk. So for them, they used to put on the back. But even today, the back, since the back has been passed on generations to generations, uh, today the back is given to the king on his coronation together with uh, a leopard skin. I'm going to show you the back. You will even touch and feel the texture of that fabric. So the back uh, is used by the different artists today to design different art pieces. Uh, they, they also, the Bagandas make different outfits out of the back. So it's very easy for you to find a man putting on a suit made out of a back. Even a lady putting on a dress made out of a back. So the Bagandas love the back so much. And even, uh, but today, cultures just changed. But long ago, the back was taken uh, to the in-law family as a dowry, so we had to carry it, and we could give them to the father and the mother of the girl as a, a piece of cloth to put on. But today we take these cotton and silk clothes. When we are inside there, that Mutesa, when they attacked Mutesa in this place, he managed to jump off that perimeter fence. So this is the perimeter fence. So this perimeter fence was constructed uh, in 1886. But up to date, the perimeter fence is still here. So they don't renovate it. Even the bricks you see right from there, these are the bricks which were uh, put at first. So by that time, it was too high. Uh, even that outside there, it's, it's, it's a bit high. Live alone here, you might say that uh, this is very easy. Even for me, I can jump it. But outside there, yeah, outside there, Mm, that's a that's a trailer. Mm. Now Idi Amin, I told you Idi Amin was the president who announced himself as the new president, taking over about it. Now Idi Amin was a tough guy, and even he was a dictator. When he became the president, the first thing he did, he brought back Motesa's remains from England just to appease the hearts of the Baganda. But he later turned into a dictator. Now, I told you Idi Amin was a president for nine years. In these nine years, uh, in 1971 and 1972, he hired the Israelis to construct for him an armory where he can store his weapons. So the place you see was constructed in 1971 and 1972. After being an Amal, Idi Amin used this place for only eight months as an Amal. Then eight months after, he emptied the cells. So inside there, there are five cells. So he emptied the cells, having heard that Obote was planning to come back. Then what, uh, the, what the place became, the place was turned into a torture chamber regarding Obote's attacking him. So, the place was turned into a torture chamber. Then Idi Amin, what Idi Amin did, Idi Amin used to kidnap the people of Obote and whoever who never supported him. So they could kidnap these people, they could blindfold them, they, they drive them uh, in trucks around the streets of Kampala to make their brains uh, think that they were driven far away from Kampala here. And they will end up in Kampala here, right in the palace here. So reaching that place, down there, that place was filled with water. So the soldiers could drive up to that entrance 
they could force the slaves to move and step in that water. Then after this, the water was electrocuted and the slaves were forced to climb and enter these five cells. Then reaching these cells, inside there, each cell had two different doors. So you are going to see where the doors were by that time, but they, they, as per now, they had to cut off the doors because the place was too scared. The ventilation inside is poor. So the people lost oxygen, suffocated. They had to die. So they, they lost their lives in this place. So Idi Amin, so I'm sorry, but there is water here, but you can just stand here and you see the the rooms. So these are the these are the cells which I've been telling you, and there are five cells. So right here, uh, if you are, uh, you look clearly here, there is a green lining or a black lining from the bottom there. So that was the level of water. So this place had water. So the soldiers could force the slaves to move and stand in this water. And I told you that after the water was electrocuted. So up there, that is the black cable, up here. So that is the black cable that they used to put on and off electricity. I told you that each cell had two different doors. As you see there, outside and inside each cell. So as per now, they had to cut off the doors because the place was scary. So right outside here, there was a sliding door. But in addition, inside again, there was, there was another door. So the soldiers used to lock these cells. So the people inside there lost oxygen and they suffocated and lost their lives inside these cells. So the soldiers could come in the night right here for them, they could switch off the power they drive in this water, they open up the cells, they load the dead bodies on the trucks. Bodies were driven and they were dumped in the Kabakas Lake, some were dumped in Lake Victoria, and the rest were dumped along the streets of Kampala. So Idi Amin just wanted to show the people of Uganda that for him he was powerful, so he wanted to be feared by the people. But in that he was just a dictator. So inside there, there are different writings, for instance, in this first cell and in the last cell. Mm -hmm. So we have different writings in these two cells, mm -hmm. and it said that these were some of the slaves who wrote these uh, writings inside there. The writings are written in blood. So they were all information about Idi Amin and Obote. So these two presidents were dictators and when they were overtaken they managed to jump uh, sorry to run out of the country so for Idi Amin Idi Amin came in Saudi Arabia and he died there in 2003 and he was buried there so he was buried in Jeddah he never brought his body back here because he was a Muslim so for the Muslims for them they don't carry dead bodies but uh, Obote, Obote ran in South Africa, but when he died in 2005, for him his body was carried back here, and he, it was buried in Uganda here. But they made a dog to become his successor, so he was succeeded by a dog. And even the retailer about the, for, of that clan, they were against that, for the dog clan. Mm. They were against the, the idea of you know, having a, a dog as a successor. So in other words, they saying better to have a dog than a Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, so it was an embarrassment to the clan to have their, their clan as an heir to the you know to the dictator. The dictator. So these are the Idi Amin torture chambers. Now Idi Amin killed thousands of Ugandans in this place. And even when Obote came back the second time, this was Obote too. So Obote too also used this place in the same manner as Idi Amin did. So he also continued to torture and kill different Ugandans here. 
So that's the reason as to why these two presidents were all dictators. And they were never wanted by the people of Uganda. And even up to date, speaking of Obote and Idi Amin, unless you want problems. So the people up to date, they don't want these two. I told you that we have candonut trees. So this is the candonut tree. So this is the tree which the Baganda has used uh, as a symbol of a clan of Buganda. So these are the trees that are at the sides of the Royal Mai Road. So this is the candonut tree. That is it. Now do you have jackfruits in your home? Jackfruit. 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 I you this one. All right. Now, if you don't know, this is the jackfruit tree, and okay. up here, these are the growing fruits. You see right up here. The taste is uh, sweet, and for us, we love it so much. Uh, but if the fruit is not ready, uh, by the way, for us to pick it, one has to go up by climbing. Now reaching there, you will be finding or looking for sounds. Now if it's not ready, it, it will fail. sound like a forehead. <laughs> so this is not. And if it's ready, it will be sounding stomach. like a stomach. So this is ready. So provided you find these yeah, sounds, the logic. Uh -huh, so you uh, pick. The best part is when you're getting it down. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you will just pick you let it fall, then you find it down here. So you can cut smaller pieces, then you share, uh, and the people will enjoy. So for us, we love the jack. So this is the jack fruit. Mm. So this is the jack fruit. You know they have their own jack, which is J-E-R-K. And this is the map of Buganda. So this is the map of Buganda. And I told you that Buganda Kingdom is the most dominating kingdom in the whole of Uganda. So within Buganda Kingdom, these are the 18 counties that make up Buganda Kingdom. And I told you that Buganda also shares the parts of Lake Victoria. So these are the parts of Lake Victoria. And I also told you that Buganda Kingdom also shares the parts of Kampala City here. So these are the places right here and in Kampala. So in uh -huh, Kampala. so we are here. We are at this here, right here. So this is the map of Uganda. And within, these are the boundaries of Buganda Kingdom. Remember I told you Buganda covers the quarter piece of the country Uganda. So you can see how big Buganda Kingdom is. So these are the boundaries of Buganda Kingdom. And right here, these are the kings of uh, the last four kings of Buganda. And this was Sekabaka. This is the Sekabaka Motesa. Now we, I told you that we give the titles to our king. When the king disappears, gets the title Sekabaka. And the reigning king is the Kabaka. So this is the title given to the kings. And this was Sekaba Kamutesa the first, who wrote a letter to Queen Victoria in England to call for the missionaries to come here and teach his people how to read and write. And when he disappeared, he was succeeded by his son Daniel Mwanga the second. So Daniel Mwanga was the king who established this palace. And he was the king who ordered the building of the lake. And when he disappeared, he was succeeded by Dawudi Chua. 
this is Seka Baka Dawudi Chua, who became a king at the age of one. And he was the king who constructed that Chokobe building. And when he disappeared, he was succeeded by Safran bin Mutesa II. He was his son. So this was the first constitutional president of the Republic of Uganda. And again, he was the king who was in the palace when they attacked him in 1966. So he was the father of the reigning king now, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II. So this is the reigning king now. And the reigning king now, I think he's now 64 years young. The king of Boganda doesn't grow old. As a nephew, the king is 100, and you will say that the king is 100 years young. So this is the reigning king now. So uh, the word here is Sabasad Yakabaka Awangale Longly Kabaka, which Mutesa the first wrote to Queen Victoria in England to call for missionaries to come and teach his people how to read and write. But this was translated. So this is the copy. And up here, these are the big, big pictures of all the, uh, the things I've been explaining to you. And here you can see the Hodi Chua uh, when he was still a boy. Mm. Mm. So that is the Hodi Chua. And here, this was the royal wedding of King Freddie, Mutesa II. And he was in one of the expensive cars I showed you when mm -hmm. we were up there. And this was the Rolls Royce. And here, this was the, the visiting of the Queen Mother of England to Buganda Kingdom here. Because then it was called uh, Bulange. So Bulange is the parliament of Buganda. So that is the main administration. So here, the, the, the king was welcoming the Queen Mother, and so the king was dressed in the Chiganda attire. Yeah, but for us, we put on a kanzu to a man, and the ladies, then they put on uh, a gomasi with, uh, with these shoulders. Uh, so this is the, uh, the, the wear of the Bagandas. And this was the Royal Mile in the PPTs. This is how that road looked like before the renovation. So you can see here, these were just trees and bushes here around. But today, they done something on the road. And this was the building, the main building, uh, before the attack of 1966. Remember, I told you that they just renovated the building. So this is how the building looked like before the renovation. And uh, here, right up here, uh, there the king was uh, inspecting a guard of honor. Remember, I told you that Mutesa was the first president, and at the same time, he was the king. So he was right there with uh, Andrew Cohen, that was the governor at that time. And right here, that was, that is, uh, today, this is the reigning king, and that is uh, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II. So that was. Prince one of the Manda Mutabi II at the age of nine. So that uh, he was nine. And right here, uh, once you see clearly here, here, this was Idi Amin uh, saluting the remains of Modesa II when Modesa II was brought, uh, Modesa II's remains they were brought back here uh, in Uganda. So it was Idi Amin who brought back Modesa's remains just to appease the hearts of the Baganda. But he later, turned into a dictator. So here, the venue was at Kololo Air Speed. And right here, this was the visit of the, uh, Pope John Paul II. Here in London, uh, the king was welcoming the king. And right here, this was the coronation of the king. And this was 1993. So this was the coronation. And I told you that the king of Buganda is given uh, a back crop together with uh, the leopard skin. So this is the fabric. And the very fabric was the fabric which we used to make our ceiling just up here. So this is the bark. That is the bark we get from that tree, the African fig tree. So this is the bark cloth. So that is the bark. And right here, this was the royal wedding of the king, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi. The second, when he was marrying uh, his wife, Navagereka Slivia Najinda. So the king of Buganda has one legal wife, but the rest of the Buganda women are all Kabaka's wives. But it doesn't mean that the king is going to sleep with all of the Buganda women, but this is just uh, some kind of respect. 
given to the king. And that's the reason as to why we are given, given this just to tie up the trousers, whereby a female can't move in the palace uh, while putting on trousers. Because as we Muganda, so we were also Muganda, because we were in Muganda's land. So that makes you to become a Muganda. So you can't move in the husband's palace while putting on trousers. So unless you have to just tie up the trousers to look like a female. So that's the reason as to why you were given this. Now these are the, uh, the children of the royal family of the current king. So the king has two sons and three daughters. So these are the sons, this one and this one. The oldest son is Junyu and the youngest is Semako Kiro. So these are the three daughters, that is Nkinzi, uh, Sanga Yambogo and Nasoro. So these are the daughters and the son of the king. And right here, this is the queen mother is the queen mother and right here at the bottom here the king was enjoying the boat race because for us the boat race in Buganda the boat race is like a cultural game so everyone enjoys the, the, the boat race so the king was enjoying the boat race and that was Sand Beach in Apugabo that is Masaka now each, uh, each man you see in these pictures uh, holding a stick up here these are the different prime ministers of Buganda. They are not elected, but they are just appointed by the king. Mm -hmm. So these are the different prime ministers. And this is the arrangement of the Buganda's parliament. Yeah. So right there in the middle, a uh, man in red, that is the king. Yeah. That was the king. And here, uh, the king was just rotating his birthday. Right here. So he was just rotating his birthday. And there it was the Muslim community, and here it was the Catholic community. So the king loves his people. And at the bottom here, mm, yeah, so right here, that is, uh, that is the Kasubi tombs, which is the burial grounds of the king. But that is how it looked like uh, before the, the fire outbreak of 2010. But today, they are still renovating it and they are soon uh, opening it up and that is the burial grounds for the kings of Uganda. And that is where all the four kings, which I told you, uh, that they are kept inside that house. And the house is called Mujibwaza Lampanga. So right here, these are the, the different art pieces done on the back. So this is the back. So that is the fabric which we get from that tree. This is the fabric. And these are very easy to carry because we just roll like this. Mm -hmm. And this one at home, so you will just turn at the back and then you iron. And even you can also flame them if you want and you hang them in your house. So they will look very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So these are the Uganda National Birds and these are the crested crane. Yeah. So for that we love them so much. Yeah, the price of each and um, every art painting is just negotiable. So these are just done by the, the French Baganda people. Yeah. And now these are the wooden sandals which were used by the ancestors before the introduction of this. So for them they were putting on this. And these look to be uncomfortable and they also make a lot of noise when you put on them. So these are the wooden sandals. And right here. These are the wooden mallets, which they use in the pounding of this back. So you will just keep on pounding like this, then the fabric will be expanding. Yeah. <laughs> so you can also, you can hold it. Mm. It's just for the, the back. So that is, now again, these are just different art pieces done by the Baganda people. So this is the African chase. This is the African chase, whereby the females are not advised to play this. In Uganda, only men can play this. 
Now, now in Uganda, in Uganda, we, uh, we play this uh, while sporting. From while sitting on chairs like this. So you can place in the middle, whereby in Uganda, the females are not allowed to squat. So provided you sit like him, mm -hmm. that means you are squatting. Mm -hmm. So, but you play it while sitting like that. Mm -hmm. All even, it was long ago, before putting it on a wood like this, mm -hmm. it was made on the floor, just at the ground. So they could dig these holes. And there, the, the, the players will be squatting at the feet. But yet the females are not allowed to squat in Uganda. So that means the females, uh, that made the females to be uh, chased away uh, in playing this. And they are not allowed to play it. So the thing that you don't play is is enough to get. Even if you place it on a desk, you are not allowed. So it's for only men. And this is the African chess. So, so this is the African pot, whereby the pot is made out of clay. But in Buganda, these were the the first saucepans where the Bagandas used to cook their food, to do their housework, like fetching water, collecting grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, these are insects. For us, we eat them. And it's like a clan. It's a clan, by the way. Whereby, uh, if you come or if you're coming from that grasshopper clan, you are not allowed to consume the grasshopper. So, for us, the Bagandas eat grasshoppers. So, this is the pot where the bagandas used to collect water, cook food, even doing different stuffs. So it keeps the water uh, cold, provided you put in water and you stay this and you stay it somewhere. The water coming from this will be uh, cold. So the bagandas long ago they never had food, so they could put their water in here. And up to date. They still use them. Some still use them. Live along this, uh, which uh, has just come in. But long ago, the Bagandas never had food, so they could put their water in this. So that is the pot. This is called the pot. And we have different kinds. We have this. We have this. We also have that. So that one you see in black. That was used for cooking. So the Bagandas used to cook their stuff in there. So they could prepare dishes using that. So this is just fresh as you see it, the color. So, and these are the, the drums. Uh, the Bagandas use this as a, a, an, a music instrument whereby they all give different sounds. So this is the main and this is the bass and again someone will just continue and make different sounds here. So provided you get any danger here, you will just drown, such that the people uh, in, uh, in Indeva will hear the drum and they will come to give you help. So this is another uh, kind of communication uh -huh, to, to the Baganda. So these are the drums. Yeah. Now right here, these are just different books telling different stories about Uganda and Uganda. Where Uganda came from, we have different books. Now these are just the books. Now from here, this will mark the end of our tour. So thank you so much for being my tourists.